I've become quite a data hoarder recently, and I'm only gonna enable myself even further. Let's get into it. As I mentioned in the intro, I have become a bigger and bigger data hoarder the more I get into YouTube, but also I've been getting into photography more. And I've been looking into a NAS device for a while now. If you saw my network rack video, you saw that I have a Synology. That's a very small, limited use case NAS. And I am kind of keeping that separate from what I'm trying to do here. So I was on Kickstarter, trying to look up new things, fun things, interesting things, got a lot of projects coming and stumbled upon this NAS from Ukraine. And I ended up backing them for this one. It is the DXP480T model. And this one is unique because it is all M.2 storage. If you're not familiar, the old NASs are run on, one second, these things. They are big, they're heavy, and this is essentially a big spinning disc in here. This is how storage has been for ever. Then people started moving towards these, and these are known as SSDs. They are solid state storage devices. They're essentially the same thing as that last one, but there's no moving parts of this. Great speed performance, but they're now kind of limited on how fast they can be used. So the next big leap is this. It's known as an M.2, and it's kind of like a USB stick on steroids. It goes internal. It's not an external USB, it's internal, but it's kind of a similar shape. There's no moving parts, and it's much faster than the uh, SSDs. So when I saw this option, I had to take it because I have a future project coming up where I will be putting one of these in a moving vehicle and using it while on the road. And so having spinning disks, not so great for that application. As for what that actual project is, you'll have to stay tuned because it's many months away from here, but I wanted to get a head start. So without a further ado, let's get this thing unboxed. All right, let's unbox this. Next level storage. Limitless possibilities. Ooh, it's like a thick cardboard. It's a very Apple-esque experience. Little, uh, Manual warranty card. Got a U-Green branded charger. The DC barrel jack in it. Um, a screwdriver. A tiny little screw, which I'm assuming is for M.2. We got some heat sinks. It's pretty nice. And then is this an Ethernet? That would be awesome. It is perfect. Let's get this out of the way. Right on the front. Ooh, look at that. Protect what you love. And then on the back, we've got the DC, a reset port, two USB C, looks like Thunderbolt, a USB 3.2 HDMI headphone, which is a interesting one, and Ethernet. All right, set that off to the side, and then moment of truth what we are putting in, I think this one's extra. I missed counted, but we are doing four, four terabyte M.2 2280s. 
Let's get these open, and then we will assemble everything. All right, let's get this assembled. Pretty solid, thick heat sink you got going there. And as you can see, they are numbered. So that's pretty handy. And let's install. And then, got to get the heat sinks on. Cocoa pens. It's actually kind of crazy how tight you can already feel it is. Just trying to push down, not that those heat sinks are in there. Alright, there we have it. Let's Take it downstairs. All right, now that it's unboxed and hooked up, it's time to set it up in the computer. First things first, we gotta go to find.ugnas.com. And as you can see, it automatically discovers the device on the network. And the first thing we need to do is create an admin user. Then once you do that, it's going to ask you uh, how you want to update the software. I'm not really sure <laughs> the best case, so I'm just going to go with the recommended here. Uh, the first things first, you're going to want to create a storage pool. That's what this whole thing's for. And it turns out my browser is not liking this because of its certificate. So I'm going to just refresh and then it'll give you the option to accept the warning and you can bypass. And this is a good time to remind you that user credentials are case sensitive. Uh, here you can see me struggling until I realized that I capitalized the S in my username and the creation and forgot that here. All right, now create storage pool. I'm gonna go with RAID 5. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the different types of RAID, just drop a comment down below and I can definitely create a video going over the different types. And uh, now I'm gonna just select all of the drives because I'm just put them all in the same pool, click create. It's gonna give you this warning about device compatibility and because this is such a new product, they haven't fully tested every single uh, hard drive out there and so I'm just gonna bypass this because Samsung is a very reputable drive, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna update the storage pool size to be within the limit of my drives. Um, it will pop up this warning about formatting your hard drives. If you used these hard drives in a previous device, you're gonna wanna make sure you get that data off of these before you continue because it will reformat them and pretty much just wipe off everything on your drive. I personally, these are brand new drives. There's nothing on them, so I don't care. 
but just be warned. And now the next step is to create a folder to put all of my data into. I'm just going to put it under the shared folder and I'm going to call it YouTube videos because that's what I'm going to put in there. And then I'm going to give my user read and write access so that I can read and write files to this <laughs> folder. All right, so now that the folder is created, the next step that we need to do is we need to connect to our computer. In order to do this, you're going to go into the control panel and you're going to go to file services. And on this very first page, you're going to see SMB. I'm going to enable this service, click save so that it saves those changes. And then I'm going to take this link right here. If you're on a Mac, use the Mac one windows, use the window one. I'm going to now go to the finder window and I'm going to click go, not that one, go and go into connect to a server, enter in that address it just gave me, click connect and then select the folder. So I ran into this weird glitch where when I tried to drag file, folders, files, whatever, into that newly opened screen, it wouldn't do it for me. Then when I go and re-navigate to the folder, once again and drag and drop and now it works. Uh, additionally, I ran into this other fun bug where the first time I dragged a folder, it acts like it's going and then all of a sudden it fails for no reason. I click OK and I click the retry and then it magically succeeds. So I'm not sure what happened there, but it works now. So we're just going to keep going with it. All right, I know that wasn't the most super technical overview of this device, but I'm trying to keep things uh, very easy and approachable for those of us that are just getting into this kind of tech. So I uh, appreciate you watching. There are more fun projects to come. If you've made it this far, as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to give the video a like, and if you aren't subscribed already, make sure you do that. It's right there, it's free. And I will see you around the bend.